Quit trying to break us up. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta fix my back. Six, we'll take a look at the international overview. Now, I know it's uh, <clears throat> common knowledge that uh, we lost some money in the last quarter, but I feel that it's premature to blame our logo. Now, Armstrong, which one of you pus heads is Brent Armstrong? Um, the guy in, with the pointer. Figures. I'm sorry, Brent, he wouldn't wait. Uh, who the hell are you? I am the Eradicator. The Eradicator. Armstrong, you missed our squash game. Oh, the D-squash letter. Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot. It was very rude. So we'll call it a default then. Whatever. Another win for the Eradicator! I climbed the D-squash ladder one rung at a time. Today, you were my rung, Armstrong. Don't try to follow me. I have a cab waiting. Eradicator! Nice game. You deserved it. Thanks. It was fun. Who are you playing next? Um, Irati Kator. Well, he must be good. He beat Brent Armstrong. Yeah. Eradicator! Hello. Hi there. And uh, who are you? I am your worst nightmare. Maurice Lawrence from high school? No, I didn't go to your high school. Oh, you know too much about me already. I am the Eradicator. Oh. When I stand atop the D-squash ladder, then and only then will I reveal my true identity. James Thorson, I shall defeat you. Great. How about Tuesday morning? Uh, Tuesday is no good for the Eradicator. How about Wednesday? 8.15 a.m. Sure, that'd be fine. You will now spend each moment between now and the match worrying. Every minute will be a universe of terror, a marathon of fear. 8.15, I'll try not to forget. Don't try to follow me. Morning. <laughs> Eradicator! I'm not late, am I? No, 
I slept here all night to get a feel for the court. Great. Well, let's rally for serve. Let the carnage begin. We well, almost won the second game. I think my mighty screen was a bit off. I think it was your serve. Do you want to unmask me? No, I'm fine. It's your right. No, everything's okay. Okay. Hey, you can always join the volleyball team. Eradicator. Hey, Wall Street, don't panic. I mean, I'm only crushing your heads. Crush you. What the hell do you guys find to talk about anyway? Uh, I like to put my money into Texaco. Well, I like to put it in the Gulf. Well, I put my money in my mattress. Well, I put my money in my wallet. You're boring me. I'm crushing your head. I'm crushing your head. Hey, I just renamed your firm Merrill Lynch and the Flathead. I crush you. Hail to you, wretched bike courier. On streets of shame, choking on car exhaust. Just trying to carve out that slice of the American dream with your two-wheeled knife. I pity you. And I crush you. Sorry, nothing personal. I'm apolitical. I'm Excuse me. What are you doing? I'm doing something. Oh, what? Like, like what? Something with people. What, what are you doing? Oh, that's a conference call. I'm crushing your head! I'm crushing your head! I'm crushing your head! That's what I'm doing, flathead! Like putty in my hands, these business boys. Hi, um, my name is David Foley, and... Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. That's, that's very kind of you. It's very kind of you. Uh, I, I was just uh, wanting to tell you about something that happened uh, uh, during this week of rehearsal, something that we sort of came across, something, well, that we sort of discovered. Um, uh, and certainly nothing that we ever expected to do as a comedy troupe, and I'm sure it's nothing that you as a, as a comedy audience ever expected to hear from a comedy troupe, but... Uh, okay, here it is. Uh, we discovered the cause of cancer. Uh, I guess uh, the, the, the best thing to do here is just, just to, uh, to, to bring Bruce out here. Uh, Bruce, are you there? Uh, Bruce McCullough, ladies and gentlemen. Bruce McCullough. Bruce McCullough. Bruce. McCullough. Thanks. Uh, Bruce has something that he'd like to say to everyone. Uh, go ahead, Bruce. Hi. <laughs> go on, Bruce. Hi. Just do it, Bruce. Come okay, on. Okay, ask me. Uh, well, I would like to. Yeah, I'll just do it. Fine. Then. I'll do it. Just go. <laughs> Dave Foley, ladies uh, and no. gentlemen. <laughs> just do it, Bruce. Just, you're wasting a lot of time. Bruce McCullough would like to say, Bruce, please. I'm sorry I caused all that cancer. <laughs> I didn't realize it was such a hideous disease. I suppose you think that makes it okay. 
I'm sorry I caused all that cancer. You don't even sound like you mean it, Bruce. Dave, you asked me to apologize, and that's just what I did. I'm sorry. Well, in rehearsal, you sound like you meant it. You sound like you were actually remorseful about what you had done, but this was a pretty, pretty lame, Bruce. I think you should apologize like you actually mean it. Fine, David. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I caused all that throat cancer and all that bowel cancer. I was just on a roll. <laughs> and? And I won't do it again. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> What's wrong? I had the pear dream again. Is I there? Yes. I think I'm insane. I know you are. I had the pear dream again. Was Jules there? Yes. He gave me the pear. We are lost. What's wrong? I had the pear dream again. Go to sleep. You know, there's more than one way to learn how to play the blues. In fact, it's two ways. First way, you know, you study your instrument, your guitar, your harp, whatever you got, you know, you study your great, like your lead belly. The second way is to get hurt. I got hurt the best way, by a woman. By a mean, bitchy woman, yes, sir. She gave me the blues so bad, I'd be lying in my hotel room at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I can't, even, I can't even open up the refrigerator door. I got the blues so bad. I got the blues so bad, I'd be lying on my bed, I can't even turn myself over. I got the blues so bad, I'd be lying there, my eyes be popping wide open. I gotta call up a friend and say, buddy, get on over here, shut my eyes for me, I got the blues. I got hurt by a real professional, yes sir, I did. She called herself Kathy, now that's Kathy with a K. He said that about me. That I was a bitch, a mean mistreater, moi. Well, if having high dating standards means that I'm a bitch, then, well, I'm not a bitch. He's melodramatic. I really like Mississippi Gary, I do. 
But after a while, dating a blues guy can get depressing. I mean, he brings his work home with him. I mean, Gary, I don't like Mondays either, but I still go to work. I mean, he sits around all day watching soap operas, waiting for his career to take off. He says that he's played with all the greats. I say, good, let's fill out a resume. But no, his whining is starting to make me a little mad. When Kelly with a kick on mad, you understand, she get the devil right in her eye. And she take out all her troubles on a blues loving guy. Yes, sir. and she don't hurt a guy one time. No, sir. She hurt a guy five times. Yeah, yeah. One time she won't talk to me. Two times she won't walk with me. Three times she won't squawk with me. Four times she won't walk with me, but in a different place, you understand? <laughs> and five times she start to eat. Because when Kathy with a K get the devil in her eye, the devil take this bus and drive straight down to her thighs. Yes, sir. She be a fat thing, I'm telling you. Yes, sir. I eat, I do, I pick, I nibble. Under stress, I have a little food, but I don't have an eating disorder. I don't hide food. I don't puke on purpose. I mean, we're at the keg, for heaven's sakes. That salad bar is three miles long. I mean, even if you have a little bit of this and a little bit of that, before you know it, you're in way over your head. Well, of course I was eating. He was yelling at me so much. I've been waiting five minutes. I've been waiting 10 minutes. I've been waiting 15 minutes. Finally, I say, waiter, waiter, bring me a cup of coffee because I'm waiting on a mean mistreater here. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mississippi Gary. I think it's time that we both started seeing other people. I mean, he's a fun date, but he's no life partner. There are other fish in the sea, and some of them aren't drunk. I know a hundred women like her, oh, with those dewdrop glasses, you know, they drive me crazy. Child. Heartbreaker. Ill-mannered. Love taker. Irresponsible. Ooh, swamp witch. I want the money you owe me back. You know, I thought I left her calm back in the bayou. One, two, three, four. Oh, I can't. It's just too cruel. But I must. It's my job. No, I can't. It's just too cruel. Hey, kid! Hey, kid! Who dressed you this morning? My mom. Uh -huh. <laughs> and do you like that suit? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? A businessman! A businessman! Then I'm crushing your precocious little head. Why did I do that? I feel terrible. He was just a kid. Just a cute little kid. I must go to church and confess. I must. Father, forgive me. Wait, I should wait till I get to church to say that. But tell him to the man. Tell it to his face. Why am I always crushing heads? That was just a little kid. He didn't deserve that. I mean, I should crush the guy who sold him that suit. I don't know. I'm crushing your head. I'm crushing your... Oh, there I go again. Once a head crusher, always a head crusher. You've really got to get, get a grip of yourself. You don't, I mean, have to do it every single time someone comes around the block. I'm crushing your head. I'm... Stop, stop, stop it, stop it. You don't have to crush every head. You don't have to... Not everyone, just maybe 99.99999% of them deserve to be flatted. Gentlemen, in reviewing your financial situation, we've determined that you have no collateral, 
no previous experience running a business, not even a credit rating. Gentlemen, you haven't even been able to produce any identification. I feel it would be inadvisable of the bank to approve a loan at this juncture. I'm sorry. You don't like us. That's what this is all about, really, isn't it? I told you, it's all a popularity contest. Gentlemen, it's nothing personal. Nothing personal? You don't like us. That's nothing personal. You'll be sorry when we're dead. Bet you will. Bet you will. Bet you. Bet you. Bet you will. Bet you will. Bet you will. Bet you will. Telephone. She'll be sorry. She'll be sorry. I bet she'll be sorry. I bet you're right. I bet I am. This is her house here. Are you sure? Hey, get off my back. Sorry. Are you dead? No. Are you? No. Are you sure this is her house? What time does the bank close? I don't know everything. Hey, get off my back again. Okay. Hi, I'm Bruce McCullough. I'd like to tell you about the Daves I know. These are the Daves I know, I know. These are the Daves I know. These are the Daves I know, I know. These are the Daves I know. David Hoffner, he works in my dad's store. He's worked here for 12 years. He'll probably work here for more. These are the Daves I know, I know. These are the Daves I know. These are the Daves I know, I know. These are the Daves I know. I've known since I was six In graded he broke his leg So we got drunk and sick These are the days I know, I know These are the days I know These are the days I know, I know These are the days I know Some of them are Davids But most of us are Daves They all have their own hands But they come from different mums <laughs> These are the days I know, I know These are the days I know these are the days I know, I know, these are the days I know. Dave Jadiski, man, this cat can swing. He weighs almost 50 pounds and he delivers my paper on time. These are the days I know, I know, these are the days I know. These are the days I know, I know, these are the days I know. Dave Capisano, I hardly know him. These are the days I know, I know, these are the days I know. These are the days I know, I know, these are the days I know. We are the days he knows, he knows, we are the days he knows. We are the days he knows, he knows, we are the days he knows. Some of us are days, but most of us are days. We all have our own hands, but we come from different homes. These are the days I know, I know. We are the days he knows, he knows. These are the days. other friends. Dad, there'll be other law firms in Boston. <laughs> it's never easy when Timmy gets transferred. <laughs> and now a poem by the Emperor of Japan. Oh. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oops, I have fallen down the stairs again. Many men come running to help me up. Hey, videos. All right. Yeah. Well, mahogany. I hear it's Will Bobbin's best movie. Yes, yes, it is. Yes. Could I borrow it? <laughs> Haven't seen it yet. I'll tell you why. I'll see it tonight and bring it first thing tomorrow. Promise? Will do. So, did you bring my videos back? Slipped my mind. <laughs> but I feel awful about it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bring the movie tomorrow, plus I'll buy you one. Do you have The Godfather? No. So you'd really do that? Will do. <laughs> Excuse me, do you work here? Yes. Can you tell me where the lima beans are, please? Aisle three. Thank you. So, did you bring my videos? Slip my mind. Should I even ask about the Godfather? Don't bother. Man, this is starting to cost me money, you know. I mean, sure, the video store is going to be on my ass, and rightly so, because when you rent a video, you enter into a sacred trust. I'll tell you what. Let's have dinner tonight. Pesto's at eight. I'll bring the video. I'll bring the Godfather. You know the Paul Simon album you've been wanting me to tape? Yes. I'll tape it and bring that, too. And dinner's on me. You don't have to bother with all that. Just, just bring me the video. No, I want to. I'm just sick about the whole thing. Okay. Pesto's at eight. Will do. Excuse me, you said the lima beans were in aisle three and they weren't. And... Would you care to order now? Could I have another basket of bread, please? the restaurant at 8 o'clock. Where were you? Slip my mind. But I feel horrible about the whole thing. No! I don't want to hear it. You're the king of empty promises. You know that, man? What we're going to do now is we're going to go to your house and we're going to get my stuff. Understand? I have to take my friend home first. But I'll tell you what. I'll bring your mahogany video. The Godfather video. The Paul Simon tape. A bottle of scotch and a written apology. I'll meet you in a half hour. Okay. Sorry, I had to crack the whip. Forget it. Shouldn't you have told him I live in Winnipeg? Slipped my mind.
Delima, what do you think you're doing? What's up? I fell asleep on the job. No, I didn't. <laughs> Look, you fall asleep one more time and you're out on your ass, okay? But I didn't fall asleep. Just drive too quick. Caught me off guard. Okay, guys, can we get him the hell out of here? See you later, boss. Jump up and get dressed and go out and have a glorious breakfast. Hun? I'd love to, honey. But I seem to be paralyzed by a deep, dark, brooding depression. Oh. Well, when did this happen? I don't know. Sometime after the wedding ceremony, I guess. Oh. Well, I guess maybe our marriage was a mistake, huh? I guess maybe we should get a divorce, huh? Bingo! That's it! That's it! Yes! Let's get a divorce! That's it! Yes, honey! Come on! Let's go eat and then let's get a divorce! Then... No, wait! Let's get a divorce first, then we'll eat! Boy, all of a sudden I feel great! Oh, come on, honey! Let's go! Let's go! I guess I'm just a little bit nervous. It's okay. I understand. Yeah. Maybe we could try again uh, in the morning. Yeah. Sure. In the morning. Sure. Good night. Telling me that on even days I've been sleeping with your brother? Yeah. Mm. And he's been sleeping with my wife. I hope you're not mad because my brother and I have a good thing going here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the groom, we give it cheers. It's really great way. Thanks. Thanks. Nice words. Nice words. You're, you're, nice very, word. you're yeah. very welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, now that we've heard from the caterers, I think it's uh, 
finally my turn as MC. Is it not to make a toast? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay, but hang on. Before I make my toast to Norm and Cindy, I want to tell you a little story about how they came to meet. Because, I mean, I don't want to boast. I don't want to boast, but you might even call me sort of a... Matchmaker? A matchmaker, yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's okay to listen to me, all right? <laughs> okay, a little history. Uh, when I was 10, my parents got divorced. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to mention that word. Knockwood, it's not going to happen here. But it happened to me. Now, my best friend at my mom's place was a guy named Norm, who I think is here tonight. Is he not? Yes, he is. <laughs> and my best friend at my dad's place was a beautiful young woman named Cindy. And is she here tonight? Yes, I think she is. <laughs> anyway, flash forward a few years later, I realized that these two friends of mine had never met and that they were perfect for each other, right? So. I had a little party, I invited some friends, some of you are here today, so that these two special people in my life could meet. Now, we're at the party, it's getting late, I'm on the balcony, I look down in the garden and I see Norm and Cindy talking, but just talking. I'm thinking, come on, Norm, go for it, man, kiss her. <laughs> but, um, so I went down to the garden, I walked by them, I didn't say a word, and I hip-checked Norm into Cindy. And when I got up to the top of the house again, and I looked down, they were kissing. Oh. Yeah. And I mean, a couple months later, they got engaged, and here they are married, and I'm still single! <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with me? I'm so lonely, I really am. Don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me. Yeah. I can't end there. Mommy? Daddy? Mommy? Hello, my name is Scott Thompson, and these are the celebrities I look like. First off, actor-comedian John Ritter. <laughs> Second, singer-environmentalist, whatever happened to John Denver. Third, actor and NRA spokesperson Charlton Heston. Fourth, actor, singer, director, Yentl Streisand. <laughs> and finally, serial killer, Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Uh, usually I don't like to do this, comment on a letter we've received. For me, fan letters are like my friend's girlfriends. I like to just look at them, smile, and say nothing. <laughs> but anyway, this one sort of caught my eye, so I thought I'd share it with you. Dear Bruce, when I saw you on the street the other day, boy, you sure were small. <laughs> I mean, I knew you weren't huge, but I never thought you'd be smaller than me. Can you explain? <laughs> Tara Blanchard, age 10. <laughs> well, Tara, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm comfortable with my height. You know, average height. Well, slightly below average height, maybe. C minus height. But still uncomfortable with it. I mean, I guess sometimes on TV, people look a little bit bigger, but, you know, I'm honest about it. I guess using honesty as a compass, I'm going to do something that you don't see a lot of my counterparts do. I'm actually going to measure my height right here on TV. Lars, are you still around? Lars? <laughs> Uh, Lars. 
Lars? Would you measure me, please? And how tall am I, Lars? 17 inches. Well, I'm not 17 inches. 17 inches, sir. Thanks. Right on. I thought I was maybe 5'7", but this is some sort of bizarre joke. Dave, Dave Foley's my buddy. Dave, are you around here? Uh, yeah, Bruce. What's up? How tall am I, Dave? Uh, I don't know, uh, 11, 12 inches. 17. Hey, okay, little pal. Hey, calm down, huh? Oh, oh, and uh, Bruce, you might want to be careful. I saw a cat in the studio, and he, uh, he looked kind of hungry. Hmm. I'd like to thank you, Tara, for bringing reality to light. I guess I've learned that self-image is a weird and wonderful thing. Well, back to the show. Bath, there's a cat in the studio. What's a cat doing in the studio, Bath? This is bunkum. This is bunkum, Bath. Three things I don't like. Crazy cars, crazy kids, and birds. <laughs> the first two I avoid. The last, I eat. <laughs> oh me, I'm a cat. <laughs> 10.53 a.m. I'm out in the backyard by the big tree. You know, the, the big tree, the cornerstone of my life, my big leafy friend. There's a bird around, but he's sticking to the upper branches, so I'm staying real still, motionless. In fact, when there's a bird around, I like to pretend that I'm a, a log. Yeah, yeah, that's it, a log. Because logs are still, they, they don't move. <laughs> Take it, boys. My being still log scheme is paying off big time. The bird comes in for a landing. When a bird comes in for a landing, I don't do anything except watch it. I watch the bird come in for a landing. I watch it. What would I watch? The tree? Anyway, he's real close now, between five and 40 yards. I'm not great with distances. But I do know instincts, so I pounce. bird flies up. Me, I can't. I, I can't fly. Cats can't fly. I'm a cat, don't you? Whoosh, you people, I swear to you. Well, you don't have to tell me it's hell being a cat. Ugh. Take it, boys. I'm a golf pro, so obviously I wake up in the garbage. First thing I do in the morning is uh, go across the street to the restaurant, you know, grab a guy by the throat and whisper something in his ear like, oh, I don't know, I'm on fire, give me your hair. Then I let him go, you know, I uh, chase a bus for a while, you know, a couple blocks, make sure it's not doing nothing I don't like, then I let it go. When I get bored, then I go up on a roof. 
I just howl at the city. You know, I love to howl at this big city. And I come down, have a cup of coffee, and read the paper. Me? I'm a songwriter. You know, and that isn't easy. And although I've had some success in the past, you know, I had a, had a song on the charts back in 79. You know, maybe, maybe you remember it. Uh... If you need someone to da 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 Rabunda. It was called Rabunda. Uh, well, ever since then, I've just been plugging away, you know, trying to come up with number two, because, you know, I'm sure I've got it in me. And so what I do is every day I get up, and uh, first thing, I rewrite my hit. Write it out on, on, on brand new paper and give it a brand new name. You know, and then I send it out uh, that way, out towards the industry. And uh, then I go back home, have a cup of coffee, read the paper. My routine? Sure, sure, no problem. Um, okay, uh, first thing in the morning, I wake up and then I get up and then uh, I, uh, I have a shower usually and um, oh, Oh, and then I get dressed, and uh, I put on a nice new shirt, and then uh, I take out um, my Zippo lighter, and I light my shirt on fire. And it burns up, and then the ambulance comes, and, uh, and then it takes me to the hospital, and uh, then the doctor comes out. Yeah, the doctor, and he works on my burns for a while. And uh, then after that, I get to go to the waiting room where I have a cup of coffee and I read the paper. <laughs> Relax, you know. Well, first thing I like to do in the morning is wake up, you know? And I brush my teeth. I'm always late, so I like to uh, get dressed as I run for the bus, you know? All on the pants, the shirt, the whole thing, right? I don't wear underwear, so that would save time. No matter how late I am, though, I always stop at the corner store for a coffee to go in a paper. They don't dick around, right? You know, I'm talking about a coffee the size of my head. Well, I'm a surgeon, so my days are very busy, but my mornings are great. What I like to do is take a nice shower, go down, have a light breakfast, always fat-free, hop in my BMW and drive to work, slow and easy. And when I get to the hospital, it's boom, the nurse is there. Boom, on with the gown. Boom, I'm handed my favorite scalpel. Boom, then I work on a guy who lights his shirt on fire. <laughs> then it's off for the gown, down the morgue, and I have my favorite cup of coffee, and I read my newspaper. Here's your shirt, Norman. Oh, thanks, Patty. Have a nice day. God, what a thing of beauty. Great handshake. <laughs> Yo! Mr. Tolson, how are you? Pretty good. Listen, uh, I'm sorry I'm late. You know, uh, traffic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, traffic. Yeah. Uh, try that yeah. on me, huh? <laughs> You're right. That excuse you gave me works great. Yeah, doesn't it, though? Doesn't it? Huh? So why were you late, anyway? Traffic. Wow, life imitates excuses. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. Look out here, Gerald. There's a sea of businessmen. The ripples and eddies you catch with your eye, those are the important guys. The name of the game is networking. Businessmen meeting other businessmen for the purpose of meeting again at a later date. Do you understand? Networking. Yeah. Now, but you got to be cool. See that guy? He's trying way too hard. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. All right. So, don't blow it. I won't. Just be cool. All right. right. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Tony! Gerald! Uh -huh. How are you, man? Pretty good. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Look, this is the guy I was, uh, this is the guy I was telling you about. Well, I would have told you about if I had been able to get you on the phone. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I was on the other line. <laughs> good to see you. What's your name? Uh, Nick. Nick? What do you do, Nick? Well, I'm, uh, just starting out. Super. That's a great way to break in. Yeah. yeah, well, I hope to break in and get hot. Yeah. That's a great idea, yeah, isn't it? Hope to see you on a mailing list someday. Great. See you then. Okay. Listen, I'm going to stand a few feet away. Sure, Tony. Sure. sure. Wow. What'd I tell you? Wow. Yeah? 
Bet he can do something for me someday. Hey, well, he knows you. Can that hurt? <laughs> no way. Now we're networking. <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Holy cow. That is a merger. That's a merger. Oh, there's another guy I know. Hey, Kutska, Kutska, come over here. Kutska, come here. Come on. Hey, this is the guy I was telling you about. Come here. Come here. Kutska, come here. Don't let me be standing here. Come here. Put that down. Come here. Okay, maybe later. <laughs> Real important guy, very busy. Player, definitely a player. Do you think he can do something for me someday? Well, he saw you. Can that hurt? No, no it can't. No, no, it can't, yeah. And, hey, there's a lot of buzz that you're hot, even though you're just starting out. <laughs> Yes, I believe that I am hot. Well, you're going to be needing one of these then. It's a business card, take it. <laughs> so, Jerry, um, do you like professional sports? Ha! <laughs> By God, I do! <laughs> yes, indeed! Why, well, I cheer for all the local teams. Yeah. Really? They're not as good as they used to be, no, I hear. No, nothing's as good as it used to be. <laughs> Except money. Money! <laughs> Cheryl! <laughs> I'm the hot guy. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, Corey. How was school? Oh, good. Good. Anything special happen? No. No? Well? Mom? Yeah? Something happened after school today. Oh, God, I knew it. Are you all right? Oh, I'm okay, Ma. But I ran up with a little guy, and he's a long way from home, so I oh, thought... Oh, Corey, you know how I feel about strays. <laughs> well, the least you can do is meet him. No. Corey, there's no discussion here. What are you doing? <laughs> Oh, my God. Not a businessman. He comes to the name Mr. Stevenson. Mr. Stevenson? Oh. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Scoot. Scoot, scoot. So, Mom, I was yes. thinking... Do you think it would be a really good idea, or is it okay? Mom, yes. can I keep Mr. Stevenson? Oh, Corey, sit down. Sit down. Now, Corey, a businessman is a big responsibility. You have to fetch his coffee, screen his calls, change his paper every day. I'm sorry, a, a businessman is too big of a responsibility for a boy your age. Mom... I'm willing to put forth the work effort. Oh, I think I've heard that song and dance before, young man. Remember the short order cook you brought home? He was between things, oh, oh. Mom. Kept me up all night making toast. He thought he was in a truck stop. I'm still making toast soup. And I love your toast soup, Mom. Oh. I'm going to get some right Corey, now. Corey, I said no, and I meant no. Corey, N-O spells no. Yes. Why, yes spells yes. Don't you spell back at me, young man. <laughs> oh, you. Look at him, Mom. Oh. He's confused. He's oh. trying to hail a cab. Oh. Well, 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 isn't that cute? Stop flashing those boardroom eyes at me. That may work. Listen, you. Listen. That may work with the secretaries back at the office, but I run a shoe shop. Look, and I see right through you. I told you that the answer is no. I know exactly what you're all about. I am a rock, Corey. I'm unmovable. If I can't keep Mr. Stevenson, I'm going to hold my breath until I turn gay. <gasps> I suppose we can fix up the desk in the spare room. Oh. Come Yay. along. We've Yay. already met. Super mom! Super mom! <laughs> That's where Randy Yates lives. He's my best friend. <laughs> Follow me. Cedar Place Junior High. <laughs>
Jason? <coughs> Are you okay? <coughs> You're all right. <coughs> Here, try something to drink. <coughs> that, oh, it's just Steven saying. <coughs> Mom! <coughs> Mom! is sick. What? He's off his martinis. <laughs> I just oh, don't know what... Oh, I see. Oh, how can I explain? Corey, you like school, don't you? Yeah. Mm, you feel comfortable there? Sure. Now, how would you feel if your school was 20,000 fathoms below the sea and your teacher, instead of pretty Miss Maver, was rather Morta, the goat woman. <laughs> and all you had to eat all day was potatoes and ice. How would you feel? Confused. Exactly, Corey. Mr. Stevenson is a businessman. And what he needs, you could never give him. For example, a promotion. <laughs> There's no room for advancement here. And that is death to a businessman. Now, if you love Mr. Stevenson as much as I know you do, you'll do the right thing. Maybe I'll get a job in your company someday. Taxi! 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 <laughs> Bye, Mr. Stevenson. a pet shop and I saw the cutest little guy in the window I don't want another pet mom oh well you'll have to tell him yourself Corey because I just don't have the heart you know and he really seemed to take to me but if you want to take him back I guess it's <gasps> your prerogative wow cooked oatmeal yeah <laughs> he's gonna need a lot of love He likes me, Mom. He likes like you. Oh. Mom? Yeah? I'll call him Mr. Stevenson, too. That's my boy. <laughs> Come on.
23rd. Oh no, the girls are coming back today. Oh no, we better clean up the country. Oh, oh Jesus. Great, we made it. <laughs> oh no, lipstick! Oh jeez! <laughs> Hello! Oh, oh, oh. 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 Um. Did you miss us? Oh sure, we oh, missed you. Yeah. Yeah. Of course we missed you. Yeah. It's great to be back. Oh. I know. Let's celebrate. Let's go, go dancing. dancing! Oh no! I love this song. I love this song. Oh, it's so true. I wish the song was a whole day long. Man, I would have the best day that day. I just can't 
listen to it while I drive. It's that good. Yep. Favorite song in my car? Life's a pretty sweet fruit. <laughs> Don't you ever laugh at my car. So, what do you think I paid for? I'll tell you. 300 bucks. 30 easy payments. I couldn't even feel them. It was like a soft breeze blowing through my bank account. Who am I kidding? 36 bucks a month almost killed me. Outdoorsy. <laughs> Not a word. I had to pick today to go bald. I knew it would happen. What's a guy need his hair for when he's got his uh, radio? In sports, the National Hockey League featured a... I love this sports score. It's so true. Life is a pretty sweet fruit. So, uh, what were you doing there? Uh, I was thinking about inventory. You know, uh, cops and toilet paper and licorice. You know, inventory. Okay, good work. Let's continue. Well, it's really late there. You know, I was falling asleep. I always stick my head in the freezer so I won't fall asleep. May I suggest that in the future you do your sleeping during the daytime when you work the night shift? Hey, 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 look. At least he's not drinking the company coffee to stay awake. Good point. Look, if you're going to stick your head in the freezer to stay awake, I suggest you keep it uh, to under a minute. It's more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. Okay? Hey. All right. I will. Yeah, move on? Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. Do you have any straws left? No. No, there's none up to the container over there. I just need a straw. Please, sir, I don't want any trouble. <laughs> trouble? What are you talking about? Do you have straws? I said I don't, don't have any straws. Look, I just need a straw. Would you get out? I don't have any straws! I'm sorry. Okay? Okay. Go! <laughs> this job's getting worse. We're all a little concerned about how you reacted in that situation. You can't see it from the angle of the camera, but he had shifty eyes. He had crack eyes. Man, this guy was a crack head. What's this uh, crack? Oh, the, the new stuff? Mm hmm Okay. In that case, uh, I think you were way too slow. Listen, uh, that guy could have gotten off a couple of shots before you had the time to say uh, self-defense. Yeah, so in the future. Shoot first, ask questions later with these crack Shoot first, ask questions later. Yeah. Got it. Okay. 
Okay, I think we only have one more piece of tape to review uh, yeah. before uh, we give you our decision, okay? okay. Uh, is, this is this it? Uh, okay. <laughs> No, uh, this is not No. No, uh, this, no. No, I remember the dog. It's after the dog. Exactly. The shirt's after the dog. I think you missed it. No. Yeah, I, I, think, I think you, I think it's, I think it must be earlier. No, no, it's, uh, sure, it's coming think, up. It's no, coming I think up. you missed it. I no? Think you should go back. There. Oh, there. Really nice. Three dollars. I only have a 20. Can you break it? Oh, sure. Big pain in the ass. <laughs> Again. Thank you. Face. No, 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 there, 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 it is. Okay. Okay, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this the, uh, is this the finger? Are you getting the finger? But he had the change. I know he had the change. My gut told me he had the change. It... Look, uh, we reviewed the tape, uh, several times, and... I'm sorry, I'm afraid we just can't give you that uh, 50 cents an hour raise you want. <laughs> but how am I going to live on 486 an hour? Like an extra 50 cents is going to get you that car you always wanted? <laughs> Solve it with the three chairs. Take out the three chairs. This is my idea. Replace it with one big sofa. Then you can put the sofa, you know, against the wall or underneath the window. I think right. it'll look nice. And I like that lamp. It's really is the finest feature to live in space. Space is the whole key to happy living, I think. You know? Maybe we have too much space. Maybe we should get boarders to come in so the living room looks tighter. Maybe we should have people in all the time. You know, always have parties and invite people. I was never happy with the second floor. Maybe we should take out the second floor and put it beside the living room. We have a very wide living room. Of course, the interesting thing about space is, honey, is that it is everywhere you go. And in fact, I kind of like the way they use the space here. You know, they had three small chairs. Excuse here. me, hon. I've got to go freshen my hors d'oeuvre. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hors d'oeuvres. Yes. I loved them as a child. Me too. <laughs> then we should meet for lunch sometime. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. No. Not just lunch. <laughs> Mingo. No, I Hello, Sharon. Jarell, hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Rory, thank you for finally coming to one of my parties. <laughs> Thanks for inviting Listen, us. Listen, come on over here. There's someone I want to introduce you to. Good, mingling. <laughs> Sandra, darling, turn around. I want you to meet Sharon and Rory. Rory and Sharon, this is my wife, Sandra. She's all I have in the world. <laughs> Nice to meet you, ma'am. Yeah. Go on, Sandra. Rory doesn't bite. <laughs> Order? Yeah. No, thanks. You know me and food. <laughs> Order? Uh, no, thanks. I had lunch alone in my office. Ah! Hey, you two should have an affair. <laughs> you don't usually laugh.
nap this much. <laughs> she sure has been shaving her legs an awful lot. <laughs> what are we doing? This is crazy. We're involved in craziness. Your wife, my husband, I think he knows. We've got to talk. Got to talk. <laughs> Listen, what are we doing? You're right. This is crazy. We're involved in craziness. You're right. Your husband. Your wife. You're right. I think they know. Bye. Bye. What, John? Cancer. Anything. Tell him I'm sick of him. John, today is my day. Now, you're the one who wanted the big brother, so you're going to get out of the house, mister, because I want one day of peace and quiet. Hello, hello. Oh. And I'm right on time. Yes, you are. <laughs> How are you, Mary? Fine. So, where's my little brother? He's right here. Ah, there he is. There's my little brother. <laughs> hey, you little firecracker, hello. Hey, you little soldier. Hmm? Huh? What's going on this week, huh? Come on, tell me, you old hound dog quarterback, rock and roll Dennis the Menace Indian warrior. Huh? Huh? Come Marion, you look wonderful as always. Thank you, Daryl. Daryl. Sorry, Daryl. Daryl, yes. Well, you two have a nice day. Well, you can be positive we will, Marion. Shall we go? Yes, I think so. Barney, how are you? Look often, American gun, a stuck Ingabar, 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 Ingabar. Uh, he is saying that this battle took place in 1807 and that looking at you, he imagines you are one of these gallant young horsemen riding a big chestnut charger to glory. Great. Now he, is, he told me that if we visit him seven more times, only seven more times, he will show us his tin soldiers collection. Yeah. What do you think of that, eh? Aren't we lucky? I think it's, uh, our visit gives him much pleasure. <laughs> Right. It's 1.15. Now is the time that I think you and I should spend quality time together. Now I know the concerns of a kid aren't the same as a gouty 28-year-old. <laughs> but still, you can tell anything to this big brother, my little brother.
Your turn. Okay, Daryl. Daryl? Daryl. Yeah, I got a problem. Got a girl pregnant. <laughs> Holy cow. Holy cow, is... But you're only eight. Is that possible? No. <laughs> ah! Ah, you're pulling my leg. You're pulling my leg. Well, that's good. But listen, as far as though that old Ministry of Women is concerned, I think you should wait. I am. <laughs> right you are! Enough bonding. Okay, let's have some fun. Go along, my little receiver. <laughs> Why'd you hit me with the ball? I didn't. Did so. Did not. Fight! Fight! Hey! Fight, hey! Fight, hey! Fight, hey! Fight, hey! Fight, stop fight, that! Fight. Stop it! There's not going to be any fighting here. There's enough of that in the world. Let me tell you, you can just stop your gang-like chanting. Look, be reasonable. He hit me. No, I didn't. He hit me with the ball. I did not. He did. You hit me. Well, yes, I did throw the. What are you looking for? A spanking? Do you want a spanking? My God, what happened to you? I'm sorry we're off schedule, Marion. I was unexpectedly beaten up by a small child. Yes, if you can believe it. Don't worry, I'm okay. I think the bleeding has stopped. Yeah. I just hope the tech wasn't traumatized, were you? No, I had a great day. <laughs> Good one, my little leg puller. Uh, well, goodbye. Goodbye, Daryl. Daryl. Sorry, Daryl. It's <laughs> Mom, please marry someone. Marry the milkman, your janitor. So where is it? Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Ta-da! Her name is Tiggy. Oh, yeah. Hey, Tiggy. So, what does it do? Huh? Come on, lie down. Lie down. Roll over. Come on, lie down. Roll over. Play dead. What a useless dog. Huh? It doesn't do anything. <coughs> Gotta go, Jerry. Thanks for letting me see your dog. Okay, Phil. See you later. Thanks for dropping by. Yeah. You humiliated me in front of my friend. What the hell do you do? I have no reason to keep you. For what? To piss on my floor? To eat my food? Huh? What do you do? Justify your existence. You either do a trick, or I'm gonna kick you on your ass. <laughs> you got one hour to perform a trick, or you're out. You got one hour, then out. <laughs> you got one hour, then out. You got one hour, then out. 
You got one hour, then out. You got one hour, then out. <laughs> what do you mean I haven't been to work for a week? Are you crazy? It's Sunday, 3 o'clock. I've been training my dog. What do you mean I'm fired? Are you crazy? What do you mean it's Friday evening? It's Sunday, 3 o'clock. I've been training my dog. That's it. I'm done. Honey, I've written my first thriller. Oh, that's wonderful, dear. Well, would you read it for me? Tell me what you think. done it, dear. I think you've really done it. Really? You think so? I'm so proud of you. <gasps> the second book is always the hardest. God, it's got to be great! If it isn't any good, they'll just say that my first book was just a fluke. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. Yes. 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 Done. <laughs> Finished. Honey, I think I've done it again. Hey, there's a spider on your back. A talking book by Donald Dane. Hey, there's a spider on your back! And now, to present the award for Best Actor, please welcome Liam Guernsey and Chalice. Well, Liam, you recently played a police officer in your movie, The Badge. Is that why you look so arresting this evening? Uh, yeah, you also played a policewoman in one of your movies. Is that why tonight you're so busted? Perhaps. <laughs> but tonight we're not cops. Tonight no. we're here to present the award for Best Actor. Yes. And the nominees are... Tyler Winston for his portrayal of a deaf man fighting injustice in <laughs> Hear the Light. So unless anyone has anything else to say, I think that concludes our meeting. Yeah! yeah. to say let me through let me through let me through let me through I can't believe what I am lip reading here today <laughs> now I may not be able to hear with these but you people you can't hear with this. Uh, Todd Langdon for his portrayal of a handy capable man fighting corruption in Rolling Tall. Now, I'm not against helping the handicapped. It's just that I'm tired of lining up for a restaurant on a slant. Okay. <laughs> So, we'll take down all the wheelchair accessible ramps and replace them with large bumps.
I want to say something. Large bumps? I mean, if you put large bumps on the sidewalks and streets of this city, you're condemning every handicapped person in this town, man. And for what? So the local bump manufacturer can make more money? Well, if that's your idea of America, then count me out. I'm not the one that's handicapped. You're the ones that are handicapped. In here. Tom Wax for his portrayal of a man with a spike in his head in the movie Spike. We'd like to welcome home Nick, who, as you all know, has been through quite an ordeal. But accidents happen. Let's be thankful for the things we do have. A nice party and a gift. Mom. Oh, it's a hat. Don't you like it? You know I can't wear this. I've got a spike through my head. No, you don't. Yes, I've got a spike through my head. I've accepted it. Why can't you? I've got a spike through my head. A spike through my head. Spike through my head. A spike through my head. A spike through my head. It's hard to look at, isn't it? Look at it. Read it. It says Pennsylvania Steel. Yes, I know I should be dead. Yes, the doctors say I'm a freak of nature. There's one thing I do know, damn it. I'm alive, and I love you. And that's the hardest thing of all to accept, isn't it, Connie? And, uh, Sir Lawrence Reynolds in Hamlet for Hamlet? Here hung those lips that I have kissed, I know not how oft. And the winner is... Yes. <laughs> the winner. Some trouble. What a bimbo. <laughs> Oh my god, it's a three-way tie! Everybody but the Hamlet guy! Father? Yes, son? Tell me, Father, what of this place called Vegas? Vegas? Well, Vegas is a noun. Is it a town or is it a small dog barking in the desert? No, Las Vegas is a town, but it is not for you to know of. For there you will find only men in cheap suits who drink their paychecks and sweat money. You do not like this place, Father. You are swift, my son. I have taught you well. Now, away with you. Father? Yes? What of the man they call Shecky Green? <laughs> Shecky Green! You have been reading my books. You know the elders forbid it. I know that you were there, Father. You were in Vegas. They called you something like an MC. <laughs> yes, it is true. I was a master of ceremonies there, yes. And they called you not Father, but by another more colorful name. Johnny Go. <laughs> Is this not a picture from that time, Father? I will not see this! Why, Father, what happened there? I was roasted. Did it hurt you, Daddy? No. Roasting was a good thing. Why, on the night of my roasting, many came to sit at the long table. Why, there was 
the great Francis Albert and Dino and a man who feigned drunkenness most humorously and F. Brooks, I believe. It was grand until I got up to speak and then all that came was silence. Silence is good, no? Yes, silence is good. But funny jokes are even better. And when they saw that I had none, this man, this tourist, heckled me. Hecklers, I have heard of this breed. They lived in trailer parks and ate canned peas. My own father heckled? Yes. I will go to Vegas and answer the heckle. No! You must not. You cannot. A heckle is not to be undone. You are not equipped. Yes, I am equipped. I will answer the heckle with my act. You have no act? Yes, I do, Father. My jokes are strong and true and varied in their topicality. Why, my friends find it funny. No, no! You do not understand. The heckle of a child differs greatly from that of a tour group. And besides, there's many other... No! Tell me the heckle that sent our people here. It is my birthright! If that is your wish. That is my wish. Stand tall. Don't pop your peas, and above all, feign the confidence. I am ready. So, good group. Have you ever noticed that when you're a young child, there are many things that you do that you wouldn't do when you're older? For example, you never see an elder sleep in a cardboard fort. <laughs> An even better example is that... Hey, you there, in mid-sentence, I have drunk many beers, and your act, it displeases me. Well, then why don't you and your stoop... Do I come to your chantings and, um, uh... Yeah. So you think you're great, eh? And <laughs> I have failed. No, you have not failed. You have bombed. But that is an honorable thing. It was a difficult heckle. Even if it did come from a man with a low sperm count. Father, your comeback, it glows. I wish I'd thought of that 40 years ago. 40 years ago, wouldn't we all like to go back there? I hear your words, Elder. But do you not recall a time when I used to express them thusly? When I was young, when I was free, I had a dream, or it hit me. The songs of Johnny Go! Yes, the same. I could have known, I could have known the sky. Wow. Isn't everybody quiet? You all seem so serious. Come on, we should talk. Jerry, why don't you tell us about your week? It was all right. It was all right. Yeah. Come on, Jerry, share. <laughs> I hurt so much. Uh, we all hurt so much. But I'm not as strong as you guys. I think I should go. That would be a mistake, Jerry, and I think you know it. But I really have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> we all have to go to the bathroom, Jerry. But we're not going to go to the bathroom, are we? And why? Because, because we're, we're not, not going, going to be tyrannized by our bladders. All right. All right. Yes, exactly. The tyranny of our bladders. And how much time have we wasted as bladder slaves? Oh, Too much, I think. Oh, Too much. A lot. But from now on, we're going to face it, fight it, and win. <laughs> but we have to talk. We have to help each other out. Come on. Come on. But I really think I should go. Well, then you don't belong here. Excuse me, Tony, but when you first came here, you were out of control. You were going three or four times a day. Yeah, sometimes first thing in the morning. I can't believe I had a life. <laughs> yeah, but you're living now, aren't you? Oh, now. Now I'm living free. Oh, living free, boy, yes. yes. Living free. free. Yes. Living free. Yes. yes. Okay, let's talk about our substitutes. What we're oh, doing okay. instead of going. Tom, what's your substitute? Well, when things get really bad, I like to think of the ocean. Oh. That's right, Tom. 
Bad choice. Bad no. choice. Oh, bad bad choice. choice. Bad. Very bad. Tony, what do you do? Well, uh, my divorce keeps me pretty busy. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty good. Works with me too. Brilliant, Tony. Nathan, what's your substitute? Well, uh, actually, I go. I've, uh, I've been going. And when did you do this last? Well, just before the meeting, actually. Oh, oh, you don't belong here! Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Wow. Come on, people. Oh. Think about that car ride. This car ride is called life. And if we want to make good time, we're not going to pull over. No, no. All right, Nathan just pulled over. Yeah. But we're not going to pull no, over, right, no. Tom? Yeah. <laughs> Tom, you went? Yeah. How could you? I had to. But it was beautiful. And the sound, as it rang off the porcelain... <laughs> was like church bells. Church bells ringing on Sunday morn with me beside my mom in a big hat. Oh. Wow. Yeah, wow. Any more surprises? A2, Tony. Yeah, just last night I was uh, having a drinking contest and I, I either won or passed out, whatever. When I woke up uh, this morning, I was in a, a puddle of urine. <laughs> now, I mean, it wasn't necessarily mine. My theory is that some guy, you know, broke into my trailer, squirreled his way in through the window, went all over me, and left. <laughs> I mean, it could happen, right? It happened to me. It happened to me. <laughs> well, it never happened to me. Oh, I'm leaving. Don't Jerry! 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 Listen to me, Jerry. Listen to me. One more month. What? You're crazy. Am I crazy? Yeah. Or am I the sanest person you know? <laughs> A big hat. A big hat. Excuse me. Isn't this the men's room? Oh. <gasps> Hi. What's your name? Hello. Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, 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 Andy. Andy. Come on in. carried my luggage for me. But you fuck it off and get in the bus with the other worms. That's right. You're riding on the bus, dirt boy. You know what? You deserve the bus. Whereas I will be riding in style on the airplane. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Yeah. Huh? I'm fucking Buddy Holly. That's who I am. Right now, I'm on top of the fucking world. I'm 22, I got my whole life ahead of me. Who knows what great pop songs I'll write? Who knows what hard working rock bands in towns like, I don't know, Liverpool, England. I'm being influenced by me right now. Huh? Yes, loser. Let's get fucking flying. I'm afraid, buddy. I don't like to fly. Shut up, Vamos, you fucking Lebarba Spick. You're gonna fly and you're gonna like it. Hey, where's Big Bopper? Tell him to get his fat ass off the can. I can't wait all day. I wrote Peggy Sue. Get in there and lose some weight. Hey, wait a second. Everything I touch turns to gold. Hey, I got an idea. I'm gonna let Knife and Rocky fly this plane. Hi, Rocky. <laughs> Rocky, you wanna fly the plane? Sure you do. Sure you do. You don't need any lessons. Come on. Let's fly this plane. Oh, there's a big bopper. The diarrhea king himself. Come on, Bopper, get in here, move your ass and get in here. That's so... Jesus Christ, is that smell coming from you? <laughs> Holy, what a smell! Hey, get 
get in here? Hey, buddy, what's that drunk monkey doing flying this plane? <laughs> Shut up, you one hit wonder, and sing my song! <laughs> That'll be the day when you make me cry. Hi, I'm Kevin McDonald. You may know me as a member of the comedy troupe, The Kitchen the Hall, whose show you are watching right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin McDonald. You may know me as a member of the comedy troupe, The Kitchen the Hall, whose show you've just turned to. <laughs> Each member of the troupe tries to write at least one sketch per show. Well, I thought that my sketch this evening deserves a little information. You see, I'm tired of writing the traditional comedy sketch. That is to say, one with a beginning and a middle and an end. So I wrote one without a beginning or an end. It just has a middle. Some of the other guys in the troupe are saying that I'm a little burned out. And I didn't really have any good enough ideas to write a beginning or an end, and I'm just trying to get by on a gimmick. That, of course, is ridiculous. <laughs> They also say that if this sketch doesn't work out, they're going to reevaluate me as a member of the troupe. So I hope you enjoy this. I really hope you enjoy this. And now, my little piece of comedy. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I've got to stop you and your revolutionaries from taking over this country. No, it's I have to stop you and your revolutionaries from taking over this country. <laughs> Stop it. Well, uh, don't you guys remember what happened last time? That's right. You should be shaking. Oh! Morning. Morning, Mr. Mayor. How are you, anyway? Good to see you back. I, I thought you weren't coming back till Tuesday. That's what I thought. Because that's what I heard. Yeah. Well, that was my sketch, or the middle of it, anyway. It, it was kind of conceptual, but, but don't you think Mark's accent was funny? I thought it was a great middle, Kevin. Thanks, Mom. My mother! Of course, uh, she's the woman that I support. Well, not financially, but spiritually. And of course, if I was out of the truth for any reason, I would find it hard to give her the kind of moral support that I like to give her. I need to work to be happy. So if I'm not in the show next week, after the troupe reevaluates me, I would just like to thank the kids in the hall for uh, giving me a chance to fail, which is all I asked and all I did. So, Mom, um, what time's your operation? What operation? Oh, what has happened to my world? It's terrible. I hate it. Uh, <coughs> oh, the pollution. The mess. Oh, gross. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I hate my work. Hey. Hey, buddy. Oh, my God, he's dead! Dead! Oh, oh. The misery of finger existence. To jump or not to be? That is the question. Right in the middle of the second day. Wouldn't you know? Good morning, Misha. What the hell do you want? I don't have enough money to pay for this cab. No, not this again. I don't have enough money to pay for this cab. Sit, 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 sit. Continuing with Act Two. Oh, you seem so sad, my friend. Why the... I don't have enough money to pay for this cab. All right, that's it. I'm fed up with you. I invite you into my house to put on a play for you, and you interrupt me? What kind of... I'm crushing your face. I'm crushing it happily. I crush 
your head. Get out of my house, fool. Take it and get out of town. There is nobody home. <laughs> there is nobody home. What do you mean there's nobody home? I'm home. I'm sitting in it. There's nobody home. What are you doing with your thumb? What are you doing with your Stop that. Making me angry. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. What are you doing? Oh, I see. There's nobody home. Nobody home. There's nobody home. Nobody home. I'm blotting you out. I'm blotting you out. Stay there, nobody. I'm, I want to talk to the lady who went inside. Why? She didn't pay me. So what do you want me to do about it, Mr. Guy? <laughs> I want my money. Right, Mom? <laughs> All right, I'll go look. All right, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking around. I'm checking really hard. But it looks like there's nobody home. Nobody home. So get lost. I'm going to call the cops. Let me talk to your mom. Ma'am, I'm trashing your head, you wrinkly old bad And here's one for you, you heavy trash, trash, go suck on the We're going to bring back tear gas and headed mama's boy. Crash, go, run, flee. Flee my fingers because I'm crashing your head. I'm crashing your cab. I'm crushing your taxi. <laughs> now, where were we? Oh, yes, if I recall, there was nobody home. There's nobody home. That's right. And you know, if we do this for a month, we live here rent free. And there's your quality meat. Don't eat it all in one place. <laughs> 32? Present. May I help you? Yes. I'm pricing me. So, how much for everything? I don't know. thousand dollars? Gulp, I wish. Okay, then instead, who do you think would win a fight between a dog and a monkey? Monkey. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> this kid, well, she's a girl, really. She goes to my swimming pool, and she has false teeth. I found them when I was diving for pucks. <laughs> she's five, and she has false teeth. And she can't eat meat. You know why? No teeth. No, she's a vegetarian. <laughs> One thing I don't want to be when I grow up is a butcher. <laughs> is that what you wanted to be when you were a kid like me? Yeah, kid, it's a lifelong dream come true. Yeah? Where's your mom exactly? Oh, I'm killing time because she's getting a makeover. Ready? My mom says if there's a depression, that I'll have to enter a dance marathon. Because I'm the man of the house. I better start slow. Hey, do you know what's in wieners? Well, there's, there's cow's eyes, and dog's heads, and old phone books, and of course, wiener flavor. Really? That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. And on my vacation, I went to Washington State, and I really had a fabulous time, thank you. Have you ever been to Mammal World and seen the 300 kinds of mammal bones, and then driven on the highway to that restaurant that echoes? Yeah, I did. You know why that restaurant echoes? Why? I don't know either. You should ask my mom. No, that's okay. So what did you do on your vacation? Went to divorce court. How was that? Hers? Mine. Do you ever worry about losing your finger like that guy that got drunk with my dad at the Legion while I waited in a cab? Because if you lose your finger on your handshaking hand, you can never meet anybody new. 
like a woman to replace your wife. 33! What do you know about the longest bunny hop line of all time? 34! 89! Yes! How much do you think my head weighs? What? How much do you think my head weighs like if I weighed it on that scale? You know if the angle was right? With or without hair? With? 12 pounds. Now, if my head were veal, which I know it is not, if my head were veal, how much would it be worth? $54. No, I don't think I'll sell. Really? It's too bad. Yeah. Yeah, but I gotta go, because my mom, she'll be dry by now. Lakeshore, west of Pine Street, please. Shut <laughs> Did you hear the Blue Jay score? Yeah, they lost five to two. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, and I know why they lost this game. Why? Let's just say that where I come from in Europe, certain people always made problems. <laughs> Look, I'm not prejudiced, but I read. And those guys are always troublemaking. Who, the Blue Jays? Look, I said I'm not prejudiced. I just think they should stop trying to control everybody's lives. Who are you talking about? Okay, get out of my cab. What? I said get out of my cab, you Serbian bastard. I'm not Serbian? What you all say? Get out of here before I beat your brains into pigs! Come on! Get out! Of here. for Minor Joe. That's the end of the show. Thank you, Minor Joe. Yes. yes. Bring it back. I'll get him. Minor Joe. Patrons Minor are reminded not to get on the stage, please. I'm not going to tell you again. Don't get on the stage, please. But I got more money for Minor Joe. <laughs> We can't bring out more dancers until you get off the stage, please. Uh oh, that's bad. Yeah. yeah. Stay tuned for more in five. So, what did the bearded lady think of Minor Joe? I liked it. Nice ass. Yeah, nice ass. <laughs> did you see what I did? I put a dime right in his navel, <laughs> and it stopped. You know why? Because he was sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you looking at? The show's on the stage. Yeah, you need six tickets if you want to stare at me. You want to fight? I'll give you a fight. Come on, I'll take off you. Yeah. Come on, I'll fight. She knocked out a cow. Two cows. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, what an uptight crowd, eh? How did I get in? That's what I wonder. How I want another drink. I want more drinks. Waiter, waiter. I'm right here. Waiter. I'm, I'm right here. We want more tequila. Yes. Uh, are, are you ladies sure you want another full bottle of tequila? Hey, we'll drink as much as we want. We're freaks. Yeah. And you never get drunk? Oh, of course you get drunk. My brain's only as big as a walnut. Oh, yeah. well, that's, that's great. Uh, that'll be $30. $30? Come here, I want to put in your undies. No, 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 that's no, okay. I want to put in your undies. It's okay, it's on me. Come it's on me, it's on me. I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying. It's okay. Hey, do you want the herb? Of course. <laughs> People's kids. God, they're nuts. They'll miss Tarzan. He's the best. 
He comes out in this in this loincloth, and then this lion guy comes out and, and attacks him, and then and then Tarzan takes off his loincloth, and and the lion runs away because he's scared. Of course he's scared. Who wouldn't be? No, who wouldn't be? Okay, ladies, are you ready? I'm sorry, our regular act, Tarzan, won't be performing tonight. He pulled a groin muscle due to audience interference. So once again, we remind our audience not to get on the stage, please. Don't get up on the stage. Yeah! 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 yeah. But I think you'll enjoy our replacement act. He's new to this stage, but he's a very fine dancer. One hand clapping against another makes a very nice sound for Rooster Boy! Mine and Daddy, my friend, my stupid little friend, but my question is where? <laughs> Make sure, what's the time? Oh, okay. Do I have a little bit of music? No. no. <laughs> Hear that, gang? You already said what a goofy. Eh? You see that? What about coming up? Do I have a chase him down? Oh, yeah, I really. Okay. Let's put a beer in front of it, eh? Yeah! Thanks, Princess. I don't think you'll be cutting me off anymore. Could you stop, please? Hey, do you mind if I stop? You gotta drop off a package. No, please! I'll just be a sec. You get right back. You going uptown? No, going downtown. Okay, you can split the fare. Scoot over. Bring him in. Come on. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Scooter. Bring him in. Come on. Come on. Okay, come on. 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 What's all the ruckus? My pen! My pen! My pen is missing! Yes, Ed. I, I've, I've lost all... I've lost my pen, the one I do all my work with. Oh, here. Use mine. No! Has anybody here seen my pen? It was in my pocket before. No, okay. Everything's fine. I'm all right. <laughs> it's Barton. Listen, did I leave my pen there last night? Come on, Dale, check. Just look. Oh. Heard you lost your pen. 
Maybe you lent it to someone. <laughs> Can I borrow your pen for a sec? Excuse me, can I borrow your pen for a sec? Okay. Just don't run off. And then what happened? Well, the assailant uh, pumped three shots into this guy and then uh, took off into an alley, pursued on foot by three uh -huh. police officers. Uh, he then made his way to another side street sure. into a waiting car. Uh, the waiting car then took off recklessly, uh, hitting a pedestrian, and uh, they lost him in traffic. But you enjoyed the film? Oh, yeah, it was a great movie. I'd see it again. Yeah. Yeah. What's the story with this guy? I don't know. No one tells me anything. What's your Sam Yeah. Are you enjoying your meal, Danny? Huh? Oh, yeah, it's uh, fine food. You seem distracted, dear. Huh? Huh? Did something happen at work today? No. Good. <laughs> I have nipples, you know. Fine, I'll just clear the dishes then. Lord, no, then put the damn plate down. I want to talk about my nipples. Well, what do you want to say about them? Okay, first of all, they're very sensitive. Oh. And I wish you'd pay more attention to them. Just because they're not floating around the end of a pair of boobs doesn't mean they should be ignored. Well, that's wonderful, dear. It's just wonderful. Fine. Then why won't you touch them? I don't know. I just don't feel right. Come on, why not? Well, first of all, it's a proven fact that men's nipples are unsanitary. <laughs> yes, they are a cesspool for germs. Why, that is patently ridiculous. And second of all, you pee through them. What? <laughs> I pee through my penis. Oh, my God! Why did you say something? 
Oh my god!